Hi there, this is Sherry Lee Myers. Welcome to How to Connect with Angels. We believe that no matter what, every person has the unconditional love and help of angels, our messengers from God. But we have to be willing to believe and we have to be willing to ask. That's what our film, The Glitch, that we are shooting here in New Orleans is all about with the help of some amazing music and talent. If you're curious, visit us at theglitchmovie.com and take a look. But now, right now, let's talk to someone who's devoted to helping us make a divine connection. Debbie Goldberg was a clinical therapist for 18 years in Pennsylvania, specializing in mental health and substance abuse issues for adults and couples. She is now in private practice as a spiritual mentor residing in Isla Mirada, Florida. Debbie is the author of a series called A Divinely Ordered Life that she scribed from Jesus, God, and the Angels. Volume 1, Are You Ready to Listen, God, was released in January 2017, and Volume 2, God's Covenant, was released in July of 2017. The last book of the series is soon to be published. Debbie is also a radio show host on angelheartradio.com, helping others understand the spiritual journey. She brings the spiritual knowledge of her own awakening into her work to inspire healing, love, joy, purpose, and creativity. Hello, Debbie Goldberg. We are so pleased and elated that we can talk to you today. How are you? Thank you, Sherry. I'm doing really well. Thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful to be here with you today, uh, especially it's it's a lovely distraction from being in Hurricane Irma. So I'm actually looking at this as a blessing. Uh, so thank you for, for somehow finding this particular day to do an interview. Uh, and Debbie, tell, you, tell us a little bit about how you grew up. What led you to become a therapist? Well, it's it's interesting because I grew up uh, in Long Island uh, from a Jewish family, mostly being a cultural Jew. Um, I didn't have a good reference from my family about what God was. Um, I, I did have uh, abuse in my family. I've had um, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, and kind of stumbled my way through my life trying to uh, just find love, be happy. Um, and I had been married. I was probably in my 30s, and uh, I wasn't very happy in my marriage. I had two wonderful children, but I felt like my life was not where it was supposed to be. And I started praying for five years for some direction of what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, something that would make me happy. And I had a dream one night, and this dream was so profound, and I realized that um, God was speaking to me in this dream. It just laid out the whole process of I needed to go to college and I needed to become a therapist and uh, just showed me all the steps of what I needed to do, that this was going to be my career. And the next day, luckily, I lived in State College, Pennsylvania, right near Penn State University, and I enrolled. I enrolled in college the next day, and that's how I became a therapist. Wow. And you were a young mom with two little people at home? Mm-hmm. And oh. just got divorced. And, yeah. A single mom. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Good on you. Good on you. And then you set up your practice, and you had a practice for 18 years. Well, yeah. Well, um, of course, when you when – you've, go to college and become a therapist there there's a time period where you can actually get a license and then go out and do private practice but for many years I worked with um, the indigent population in the area and I worked for other people in different settings um, with the mental health and drug and alcohol um, <clears throat> uh, problems and about I would say six 
seven years ago, I opened up my own practice with a business partner. It was always my dream to have my private practice, and I attained that. Um, it was, and it was wonderful. And you said uh, in the, I believe in the introduction to your book, you talked about the fact that you were divinely guided to become a therapist to heal yourself. Yeah. Uh, I even asked God that question. I said, why did I just have to go through, you know, I went through six years of college and did all of this work, especially when I saw that my career was taking a turn, um, writing books and doing other things. I said, why, why did you send me to school? And he said, you needed to heal yourself. Do can we talk very specifically about September 13th? 2014. Yeah, um, I went to, I, I saw something from Margaret Paul in the Huffington Post. It was an article that she wrote, How We Create Our Own Pain. And it really resonated with me. And I decided that I was going to go to a workshop. And that weekend, I went to a workshop. And she teaches a guided imagery meditation and it is purposeful in meeting your guidance so that you could visually, um, auditorily, that you can connect with your guidance. And I had not meditated up until then. This was all new to me. And so she was reading the meditation. And as I was in this meditative state, and I was at my happy place, which was a pool, mm -hmm. and and the, all of a sudden, this man comes and sits next to me. It's sort of like you're daydreaming almost, like you're in, you're watching a movie in your own mind. Mm -hmm. And um, this man came and sat with me, and he had, you know, shoulder length, dark hair, and um, he was wearing a white T-shirt and jeans, and he was just very loving, and it just felt really good sitting with him. And then all of a sudden, I was in the pool in a raft which is my favorite place. Oh. And all like a bunch of my younger parts of me, my younger selves appeared in my arms while I was laying in this raft mm. and wounded parts of me that have never been healed. And this man got in the water with me and he just started putting my arms around me and them and he wasn't talking but what I what I understood is is that I needed to heal myself and and that all of this all of these wounds were there to be healed um, and it took me a little while to digest all of that because I never had an experience like that and it was overwhelming uh, I just bawled my eyes out because it, it felt very healing um, and it took me a long time to actually recognize or understand that it was Jesus. I was at Krupalo uh, for the workshop, which is a yoga. Um, it's it's where a lot of yoga workshops are held, mm -hmm. and they had. Uh, I had seen because I had never done yoga either, so I took a yoga class when I was there, and everybody was had these um, blankets that they were putting over their yoga mat. And when they had a store, and I said, "Well," um, and I looked at them, and they were very nice. But in my meditation, Jesus had the same kind of blanket sitting next to him, and. I thought, isn't this weird? Um, I don't know what the representation was of the of the blanket, but I went to the yoga shop and I bought the same blanket. And uh, and, and so my I came home and I told my husband what happened, and he said that that sounds like Jesus. And and <laughs> and, I, and and I said, well, why why would it be Jesus? Like I'm Jewish, I don't have any kind of thing which you know jesus or christ or and um and he said that that's that's jesus i said and i showed him the blanket that i brought home and he said that's a prayer shawl and i said okay i thought it was some kind of aztec blanket like i, I just didn't understand yeah. um i was like stepping into a whole nother world of of 
learning what things were. Yes. And so he helped me try to tie some of these things together. And my inner child knew all along that it was Jesus. She kept telling me it was Jesus. And I would just kept saying, I, I just can't wrap my head around it. Why? And I kept dismissing it. But I got to the point where I said, I think <laughs> I think I can allow this. <laughs> Now, you worked with, you channeled with Jesus to write mm -hmm. your trilogy. So let's just jump right in and talk about the fact that you have three, uh, it's a trilogy. It's three amazing pieces of teaching. Um, let's, let's, go, let's go ahead and describe it. Let's talk about how it came to you and what it's there for. Okay. Uh, this happened, uh, February of 2016 and my husband and I were in the process of moving to Florida from Pennsylvania and before I left I just kept getting a feeling that I was going to write and that I had to spend about six weeks by myself um, while, while my husband was still getting our house together in Pennsylvania. I went to Florida to open up a practice there and and I knew that that time was going to be very significant, but I didn't know why. And then one day, um, not long after I got to Florida, my husband left. Jesus said, okay, go get your pen and paper. We're going to write. And I, I said, what are we writing? He <laughs> goes, well, I'm going to just dictate to you. you. I'll just dictate and you write down whatever I say. And I was like, okay. Um, and so I had no idea what was coming. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what was coming. And so for six weeks, it took two weeks to write each book. So in six weeks, the three books were manifest. And the mm -hmm. first book is called, Are You, Listen Are you Ready to Listen? God, yes. God, I'm sorry. Are You Ready That's to okay. Listen? God. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the question that God asked you personally. Can you tell us the, tell us the reason why you got a, a laugh around that? Yeah. Um, that happened about two months after I met Jesus and started on my journey. And I was sick in bed for about a week and I decided I wanted to know what my purpose was. And I was working a couple of different programs and I was praying and meditating and begging, God, please, please, please tell me what my purpose is. And then out of the blue, I hear, well, are you ready to listen? And this really strong man's voice. And mm. I had not heard this voice before, but I knew it was God. You just know it in your heart. You know when God's talking to you. And um, I, I was just taken back and a little scared, but I started to just laugh because it just <laughs> hit me that my ears have been closed for 56, 57 years, that I would not listen to anything. I had shut down as a child because of everything I had been through, and I never wanted to listen to what anybody had to say to me. But darling, you were a therapist. You're a therapist. That's all about I guess. listening. <laughs> I know. And I would listen to my clients because it was about them. Yes. But when somebody had something to say about what I should do, uh, that was a whole nother thing. Uh-huh. I get it. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was the first thing he said to me. And I was, I, I am like, oh, uh, yeah, I understand. You've probably been talking to me all along and I just have not been listening. Like I've, I've not listened to myself or anybody else. So I, I really came to me when I was putting the title together for the book that that was, that was it. Because it's not just me, it's it's lots of people. By the way, we're going to stop right now and let everyone know that there is a link to a free first chapter of this book on Debbie's website. Go ahead. Talk more about your first book, yeah. Yeah, this, um, it's, it's a huge... It's a huge thing to do to actually go in and walk the spiritual path and do all the healing that needs to be done with with spiritual guidance because there's a huge difference in what I was doing 
non-spiritually traditional therapy um and and you never get down to the the depth and the core of what is going on inside of you because you don't realize there's all these different parts mm-hmm. like the ego and your higher self and your wounded selves and this uh uh dark side of us um which is it's all energy but um this this is something I've always wanted to heal myself. And, and here was this opportunity to do this. Uh, and it is, it is a lot of work. I know that not everybody wants to do it because it really means going into the depths. It's opening Pandora's box and it's taking responsibility for everything that you do and think and create and create and create. So the first book was the uh, the first phase of this journey, which was healing yourself. Would you mm-hmm. say that? Okay. Yeah. Now, you, shall we talk more about what is in the first book or can we just hover over the next two so you can tell us how they fit into the journey? Sure. Yeah. So, the you know, like, the first book is about how, what is there, what you find, um, all the love, all the spiritual guides that are there waiting for all of us, uh, and to help us walk this human life and actually attain what we're supposed to do in this life. And, um, actually come into who you are. The second book, God's Covenant, Illuminating the Path to Your Calling, is more about, it goes deeper into who we are, and and it goes into the healing process of how I healed with some of my wounded selves, um, how I had to forgive. I had to do a lot of forgiveness um, with family members, and for trauma that was affecting me up until just recently. And uh, so it's, and it's, you're, what you're doing is keep, it's like an onion. You just keep peeling more and more layers off. And mm-hmm. for even forgiveness, there's different stages of forgiveness that I'm writing about in the third book. Uh, because you, you go through a very superficial level of forgiving down to the core of, okay, I I have compassion and I forgive, I love, and I let go of all of this. So you want to do all of this work because you eventually start to find that you have so many gifts and talents um, and you're, what you're doing is actually purifying your own vibrational light mm-hmm. so that you can come into more of who you are are and divinity wise what you came here to do Mm -hmm. um to uncover your your divine calling Mm. yes you 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 do refer to that living that life with of a divine calling with a divine calling and Mm -hmm. you that's what you're doing isn't it Mm mm-hmm yeah i i believe that i was meant to wake up as many people as i can and uh, and so I've been given these books. And this is another thing about creating this life um, is that you're not doing that by yourself either because every step of the way, when I look back, I have been given or shown what I need to do for the next step. It just keeps um, unfolding mm-hmm. that you don't have to think about all of this stuff yourself, which – which I'm still trying to get over doing because my ego and will just want to keep taking control over everything again. So it's, it's not an easy walk. And I actually um, waffle every single day as I keep practicing um, what I, what I'm writing about because it is a lifelong process. It's not, you know, I'm going to get it done in a week or a month or a year. This is a, a life process of learning all of these things. (laughs) <laughs> please the, share your surfing meditation, will you please? Because yeah. here you are. Yeah. <laughs> here I am. You know, I'm I'm safe, but you know, there's turmoil going around weather wise. Turmoil is a great word for it. 
Yeah, and and you know, you I don't know what I'm going to go home to, yeah. or my house is going to be like if it's yeah. going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's yeah. it's been difficult. So when I start meditating today, I, I hear Jesus saying, "Okay, Deb, surf's up," and and all <laughs> of a sudden we're in a we're on a surfboard. He's in the front, I'm in the middle. God's behind me, and we're shooting curl somewhere and out in <sighs> an ocean somewhere. And he's like, "Come on, let's have fun. You know, this this is fun." <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not having fun, Jesus. Like. <laughs> 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 what, yeah, what are you possibly talking about having fun with all right. of this turmoil all of this chaos all of this unknown unknown unknowns unknowns right. my god right yet right. here you are you beautiful soul and you're laughing but i wanted to mention that these three books were first put out last september of thousand. 16. Mm -hmm. And what I did is um, I switched publishers in, I think, November of last year. Mm -hmm. And when I switched publishers, she said, Deb, do you, you know, how about we change the covers on these books and um, we do some something else with them and the titles? And at first, I, I called them creating a life worth living is what it was called mm -hmm. and I thought oh you know do I you know was my work not good enough that's the first place I went sure. and then I decided that you know what what those three first books were um were what Jesus dictated to me yes. and it was verbatim and um and I did put some of my journaling in with him and the angels but I, I said, you know what? I did not own those books because I thought people would think I was nuts saying that I talked to Jesus and God and the angels. And um, and so I was afraid to actually put myself in those books. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I edited them. And so the Are You Ready to Listen God became volume one and God's Covenant volume two. And volume three that I'm editing in the process of editing is not published the edited version just yet. And that will okay. be called the scripture of heaven. So it would be the, th the third book that is already out there under creating a life worth living, but it will, um, it will not be the edited version of it with all of my information, all of my learning, all of my journey mm -hmm. um, in it. But okay. hopefully October, maybe okay. October, November, it'll, it'll should be out. We'll time that. Yeah, definitely. That's wonderful. Deb, um, you have the three books. You have a practice, right? Do you, I mean, you're not, I'm not talking about meditation practice. Clearly you have that, but you also counsel people. I do. Um, except now I'm do, doing spiritual mentoring and trying to help people find their guidance mm -hmm. through meditation mm -hmm. and then, and then developing a rapport to start to build relationships because God just wants a relationship with people. He, um, I call it, he, um, God's just energy. That's just the way that I experience that energy. And that feels right to me. There's no wrong or right how people experience divine energy of what they want to call it or what names or genders or whatever it is form. And, um, so my 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 purpose is to bring people to the light and to help them heal and find the love within them so that they can go forward and become the light that they're supposed to be. Let's talk about angels. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how the angelic enters into the work that you do now. Mm hmm. Well, I have a fourth book that has not been published yet, and that has been given to me by Archangel Michael. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's all it's all about intuition. Uh huh. Uh, how how to connect with your intuition, and um, so that will probably be next year before that comes out. There's actually a fifth book written as well, but that was Jesus dictating to me again. Mm -hmm. Um. So the angels started to 
um, I didn't even understand any of this angel. I, I thought I, I probably believed there was angels, but I didn't know anything about angels. And I think one of the first angels, uh, other than Michael and Gabriel had come to me, there was an angel, Simon, that I had put in the books that had taught me about that God is just energy. He's he's not a, a man up in the sky somewhere, which I probably believed for a long time. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, yeah, and so taught and taught me that there is so many angels out there because I said, oh, I never really heard of an angel, Simon, and they're all so sweet. Um, <laughs> and, and 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 it's it's really amazing. And he said there are so many of them that you would have never heard of that they're angels mm. that are there helping everybody. And then I've had, um, I'm, I'm pretty serious often, and I'm very focused. And so one of my, uh, one of my lessons to learn is how to lighten up and have fun, more fun. And that's, that's why Jesus actually did that this morning. It's because reminding me to get out of the seriousness of everything. And, um, so um, Archangel Michael, one time, this other angel came to me and he said his name was Miguel. <laughs> and, and, um, and I was having a rough day and he starts talking to me and he's cracking all of these jokes. And I'm like, who are you? Like, and, and he was, he acted like he had an accent. He had a wig on. It was like comic relief. And, and I thought, is this Michael? Like, are you doing this? And uh, I think, I don't know what it was, but yeah, there's even comic relief um, there available through the angels to do whatever you need. It is so specific to you um, to get you to the next place, to help you, to comfort you, even if it means they, they need to make you laugh. Um, but there has been so much love um, and protection from Michael. Um, I was just talking with Michael yesterday about protection for this storm in our house and the people of Florida and the Keys, you know, that are um, getting hit right now. So um, I, I, they are available to be called on for all kinds of love and comfort. Um, every night I pray for Michael to hold all of us um, in his arms while we sleep uh, to bring love and comfort. Uh, angels are there for everybody. It's, it's so beautiful. Your experience of your life is very different from before, isn't it? Your, it has, your own it, life experience, how you go about your life. Yeah, um, it's changed me. Um, and I'm still trying to learn who I am. I mean, because this is such a huge difference in process and you're also working around all of your old habits and the ego and and I've changed a lot of course I think for the better um, it's opened my heart in ways that I, I can't even imagine um, that I would have ever done before um, and with the love that flows through us we're able to be able to keep expanding our heart which is why why we're here, but it is it is shaking everybody up. It has shaken up my husband, my family, my friends, because I'm not the same person that I was, um, and you know. So it it is an interesting um, it is an interesting walk, but I won't go back. And and in fact, you have you've reached out and you are now heard around the world on Angel Heart Radio. You have a show. Yes. You have a show. Yes. Tell us about the show. I love it. I just love it. Um, <laughs> Anaya, uh, Anaya Joy Halili um, is the founder of Angel Heart Radio, and she 
uh, found me from Michelle Bieber, who you interviewed as well. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's really funny how this all got linked up because probably two years ago, I had seen a post from Michelle Bieber on c the computer. I had never heard of her before. And um, God told me I needed to reach out to her. Mm. And I said, what? You want me to reach out to somebody that I don't did it? Why are they going to talk to me? And he said, I want you to do it. It's really important. <laughs> Not knowing that these books were going to come, that she had just wrote a children's book. And I had actually have a children's book that I have not published yet either. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually reached out to uh, Michelle and um, Michelle was so very helpful to me. She was just such a blessing. And then here it was, Michelle told Anaya about me. Mm -hmm. And then, and I, you know, she asked to interview me. And then after the show, she asked me if I wanted my own podcast <laughs> and, and I couldn't believe it. That's what I mean. It's, it's like, <laughs> I don't have to go out and do things. We don't have to go out and do things that will just be brought to us the next step. And, uh, because you're already moving on your path. I mean, I want to, I mean, there's one thing to be passive and another thing to be understanding that you really are surrendering to a flow that you are putting yourself mm -hmm. in a flow. And that is the work mm -hmm. that you're doing is to right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Yes, and that's a great way to put it, and that's exactly what I'm doing to Hurricane Irma right now. Mm. It's part of my process of just surrendering um, because it's not easy to do that. Um, but, yeah, I love being able to talk about my books, but what I love doing more is interviewing people and bringing their light out to the world and sharing what wonderful things each person has done that I'm just amazed at the brilliance that is out there and and everybody has their own little way of you know teaching it or how, how they learn something or whatever they're doing and it's all it's all amazing and it's all divine and so I love having all these different types of uh things that people that I interviewed with different uh completely different aspects of life angel heart radio and when exactly is the show it's thursday evenings at 7 p.m eastern time okay good everyone thursdays 7 p.m eastern okay good and angel heart radio is easy to find it's easy to find on on the internet y'all <laughs> mm -hmm. so start tuning in Oh, uh, Deb, uh, we are going to keep, of course, following you closely, um, and we're going to keep in close touch over these next days and weeks, and uh, I want you to know that, you know, I just feel honored, honored that we got to have this conversation today. Um, I really am. Thank you so much for what you, what you've surrendered to do. Well, thank you so much, Sherry, for giving me an opportunity to be interviewed. Um, I, it was a great surprise, and I'm just so happy to be here and to actually meet you and to get more involved in what you're doing because I think what you know the movement that you have and the movie and everything is just awesome because that you are doing your divine purpose in bringing people um, angels. Yeah. All right, sweetheart. I'm going to sign off because otherwise we'll be just talking all day. And, you know. Okay. <laughs> all right. I love you. Be well. I love and you I'll talk too. to you soon, Deb. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. And if you liked this recording and benefited from it, please, for heaven's sake, share it with your friends. If you loved it and want to hear more, go to theglitchmovie.com forward slash how to connect with angels where you can listen and subscribe thank you so much